1989, my father became very ill and he started out with just a cold. He was admitted to the hospital because he couldn't breathe. Uh, this cold had affected his respiratory system and they couldn't do anything for him. His uh, they kept checking his potassium and his potassium would continue to drop. At one point I think it was down to 2.4 but no one ever thought about giving him potassium. They came in and pounded on his back trying to loosen up the secretions and eventually they decided to do a tracheostomy to try and help him to breathe and when they did the tracheostomy they gave him an anesthesia. Well when they gave him that anesthesia it paralyzed his entire body and he never recovered after that. Uh, it paralyzed all the muscles in his body including his respiratory muscles and he died two days after having that procedure done. I should probably also mention to you at this time that this brother that I had that was a year older than I was um, also was born after my mother had been given anesthesia for the birth and we only found out after obtaining his autopsy records that his potassium levels had dropped because of my mother being given this anesthesia and because of that and the times that they were, this was back in 1948, uh, the doctors just didn't know what to do. They tried to get him to suck from a bottle and take formula, but that was impossible for him because he lost his suck reflux because his potassium was so low. And he also passed away due to the result of anesthesia, low potassium, and periodic paralysis. After my father died, it became my mission in life to try and figure out what this was that was afflicting our family. And so I started collecting medical records from every doctor that was still alive that had taken care of my father, this baby, my mother during her pregnancies, myself and my sister. And we collected records from hospitals and uh, universities. We filled three volumes with medical records. And as I started reading these medical records, a pattern began to began to develop, I realized that all of us at some time in our life had been tested and had very low potassium readings. Um, there were things that happened to us that ha had happened to all of us, such as having attacks after eating sugary diets or after having anesthesia. And a doctor at this time that I was seeing down in Miami told me about a new group that had just formed and that was the Periodic Paralysis Association. At that time I thought, well, isn't this funny? Back in 1970 a doctor had told us, our family, that maybe we had periodic paralysis and now here's an association that specializes just in periodic paralysis. So I, the, it was the computers were even young at that time and so I got on the computer and I contacted the Periodic Paralysis Association and that was probably the smartest day of my life because that organization has taken me from being someone who couldn't couldn't work, couldn't go out and do a lot of things to being a fully functional although scooter bound individual who now does public speaking and uh, eats, leads a very active life uh, with periodic paralysis. Uh, at about the same time that I contacted the Periodic Paralysis Association, they had formed a partnership with Dr. Frank Lehman Horn in Germany. And Dr. Lehman Horn generously had decided that he was going to test uh, blood for our PPA members free of charge and he was just starting to do genetic testing on people at that time to see whether or not he could identify genes in people who had periodic paralysis. In about 2003 we sent our blood to Dr. Lehman Horn in Germany 
And to tell you the truth, I honestly forgot about it after that. Um, so much time went by and we didn't hear anything. We just thought, well, you know, we've reached another dead, dead end. But then, in August of 2006, one day on my computer, after dinner one night, I, was, I went in and usually I was just answering email and lo and behold, an email popped up from Dr. Lehman Horn and he says, Dear Linda, I think I have found your mutation. And to this day, that is probably one of the most exciting moments of my life because we were a family who had been looking for this for over a hundred years and now this doctor so far away in Germany had given me something that was like a new birthday. I finally knew who I was and uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. I think I yelled through the house to, to my mother and to my husband saying, you aren't going to believe this. Somebody has figured out what it is we have. So it, it was kind of a, an odyssey. Uh, all these little pieces that had connected. A doctor in Germany in 1970, um, sending blood in 2003. Now it's 2006 and a doctor has said that he has found our genetic mutation. And after he found our genetic mutation, he invited my sister and I to come to Germany so that he could do further testing with uh, an NAMRI machine that's located only in Heidelberg, Germany. And fortunately, we were able to do that. We were able to go and have the testing done that confirmed that my sister and I both had periodic paralysis. But this doctor didn't want to stop there. He wanted to confirm that this had been passed down through the generations. So he asked if I had any DNA from my father. And my father had died in 1989, and here it was, 2006. So I started racking my brain as to where I could possibly find DNA from my father. And I remembered this muscle biopsy that we had done at Yale in 1970. And I said, I wonder if, I wonder if that muscle biopsy slide still exists. So I called Yale and I talked to just a wonderful person there. And she was willing to go down into the basement of Yale and look for this muscle biopsy slide. And about 24 hours later, she called me and she said, Linda, I have found the slide. There is one slide of your father left. And so Dr. Lehman Horn uh, asked that this slide be sent to him in Germany, which it was, and he was able to get enough DNA off of this one slide that you would use with a microscope and find my father's DNA and confirm that this DNA had been passed from my father to my sister, my brother, and I. Uh, and, it, you know, it, it was just very, it was a life-confirming thing. It, it was something that I couldn't believe had happened. Uh, it, it was just a tremendous journey that we had been on. Uh, now, in the past, uh, let's see, probably four to five years, I have been working extensively with Dr. Lehman Horn as his genetic liaison here in the United States. We've become very good friends, and I help people in the Periodic Paralysis Association try to go on this journey that I have gone on. I work with many patients, organizing their medical records, shipping their blood to Germany, and seeing if we can find the mutation in them, just like Dr. Lehman Horn found in me. And I have to tell you, in closing, that every time one of these patients calls me on the phone or emails me and says that they have heard from Dr. Lehman Horn that their mutation has been found, it is as glorious a day for me as it was the day that Dr. Lehman Horn contacted me. It is life-changing for them and I feel it. I know what they have gone through. So thanks for listening to my story and I hope that I can help you make a story of your own. If you would like to know more about periodic paralysis, visit periodicparalysis.org.
And if you enjoyed this video and want more, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. It really does help spread the word. You can view other videos about periodic paralysis by clicking the thumbnails to the right. If you have questions, just leave a comment below or reach out to us on social media. We'd love to hear from you.